Have you ever seen a photograph so beautiful that you just wanted to jump inside of it? As it turns out, he's right. We can. If you watch the Broke Boy vlog, you know that a few days ago, Josh and I began production on another music video. But we ran into a small dilemma. That's, that's the one we're hoping for. That's the wide bird's eye, Ollie laying down, we've got that. It's supposed to be, as you can see here, Ollie laying we on the We needed to get a bird's eye view shot of someone lying on a bathroom floor, but the shot we wanted would be technically impossible to get without removing the ceiling. Which we are not equipped to do. I really liked the idea of the shot and I didn't want to rework it, so I started brainstorming to find a solution. And after hours of racking my brain, it finally hit me. What if I had a photograph of a bathroom from the top down? Could I find a way to blue skidoo a camera into that space? Turns out, this is absolutely possible. And it's more common than you might think. With just a little bit of visual effects, we can take any two-dimensional photograph and turn it into a three-dimensional space that you can send a virtual camera through, just like you saw in our opening sequence. Now there's a couple different ways that you can achieve this effect. The most practical way would be to use a technique called 3D projection in a program like Nuke Studio. I've done this before, and it certainly works, but Nuke's node-based workflow can be incredibly daunting if you're not an experienced VFX artist. And if you're watching this tutorial, it's likely because you're a beginner to visual effects like me. And you probably want to use programs that you're more familiar and comfortable with. Plus, the official version of Nuke is like $9,000, and I'm a broke boy who can't afford all that. I'm going to show you an alternative way to turn a 2D image into a 3D space using only Adobe Photoshop and After Effects by utilizing a tool called Vanishing Point. Let's get started. The first thing you're going to want to do is bring the photo that you want to use into Photoshop. Ideally, you should use an image that is only an environment and doesn't have a subject in the foreground like this picture of me does, but I really wanted to use this picture, so I made things more difficult for myself. I had to cut myself out of the photo and paint the background back in, so try to avoid doing this if you can. The next thing you're going to want to do is crop your image into a 16 by 9 aspect ratio if it isn't already, or whatever aspect ratio your video is going to be. Next, select your layer, go up to the Filter tab, and select Vanishing Point. This will open up a whole new window. Now this is where you get to build perspective planes on your image using the Create Plane tool. Click each corner of a plane to create a grid over that area. I find it's easiest to start with the floor. If it doesn't line up perfectly, just click and drag the corners until you're happy with it. Now to add walls, all you have to do is command click the middle point on one side of the floor plane and drag upwards. This should create a plane for each wall that lines up just right with the floor and the rest of the image. You can do the same thing if you have a ceiling in your picture, but mine doesn't have one so I won't worry about that. All that's left to do is add the last plane, which I can do by command clicking and dragging from the floor plane or either of the wall planes. Okay, I know that was a lot. With me so far? Once you have all your planes identified, click this little settings icon and select export for After Effects to export a VPE file. Now open up After Effects, right click in your project window and select import VPE. This will automatically create an After Effects composition with the same name. Adjust your composition settings to whatever you'd like. I'm going to choose 1080p and 2397 frames per second. Now you'll notice your image is in there, but it looks pretty funky. After Effects was able to use the planes you identified in Photoshop to import the image as a 3D object, but sometimes it isn't lined up perfectly with your virtual camera, so play around with the positioning and orientation of your camera until you can get it lined up just right. You can also adjust the position of the object itself by adjusting the position and orientation of the parent object in your composition. Now, to send your camera through, all you have to do is put a keyframe at its starting position and a keyframe at where you want its ending position to be. You can also add keyframes for the rotation of the camera as well. Play it back and there you have it. Now I know what you're probably thinking. Eam, if I wanted to zoom into an image, couldn't I just scale it up? Increase the size of it like I'm doing with this shot right now? No, actually you can't. Let me show you the difference between simply scaling a 2D image versus using this technique.
The 3D projection is so much more convincing, you probably didn't even realize that I've been talking to you from a completely fake digital environment this entire time. I'm actually standing on a green screen. Fine, Eam, you got me there. But still, what's the point of all this? What is the actual practical application for doing something like this? Using this technique allows you to get shots digitally that would be otherwise impossible in real life. For example, maybe you're making a horror movie, and you want a shot where there's a hallway that stretches away from your main character. By manipulating just a few values on the different planes, you can stretch your digital environment in ways that would be physically impossible to do in real life. Okay, one last thing. You might be wondering how I was able to get the text to float in this opening shot and make the camera look like it's flying past the letters. I was able to achieve that look by doing some simple motion tracking. I know motion tracking can sound really scary and complicated, but it's actually quite simple and it can save you a ton of time when you're trying to pull off effects like this. If you want to learn more about motion tracking, be sure to like and share this video and subscribe to the Broke Boy Media YouTube channel so you'll be the first to know if we ever cover that in the future. Until then, thank you for attending Broke Boy Film School. Class dismissed. Am I doing good, girl? No, not quite. I wish I could talk to you late at night. Smoke away the bullshit in my life. <laughs>